Good morning and a very warm welcome to Rothley Parish Church for our service this week. I'm so pleased you've been able to join us online and uh, we pray also for those that are following our service in their own homes, following the words. It's great to be united together as one church in this place seeking to declare the good news about our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, before we begin this week there's a couple of things I'd just like to mention. Um, firstly um, about Lent, um, Ash Wednesday is on February the 17th, so it's just over a couple of weeks away. And what we want to do is encourage everybody to read this little book called The Beauty of the Cross by Tim Chester. Um, Liz has put details on the fellowship post of how you can get hold of that book. And it's a book which has a, a daily devotion each day in preparation for our celebration of Easter. And another thing just to mention, uh, while I was... Um, just for preparing to record this service, I saw a message uh, that some of you have put around about doom scrolling, um, which is sort of that idea of scrolling through the news headlines with it just filling our minds endlessly with stories of doom and bad news and depressing us and crushing us under, under the weight of all that is wrong in the world at the moment. And so I'd love us to begin this service by lifting our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, there's a lovely verse at the beginning of Psalm 103, which says, Praise the Lord, all my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Uh, there is so much we have to give thanks to God for and to praise him for. Um, the first verse begins, the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. A reminder of that great verse from Lamentations that new every morning, your mercies I see. So let's sing this uh, song together. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul. I'll worship your holy name.
Well, as we look forward to that day of an un unending praise before our Lord Jesus Christ, um, let's pray. And uh, the special prayer for this week. God, our creator, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may dispel the ignorance of darkness and unbelief, shine into the hearts of your people and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, while it is absolutely right that we um, dispel the darkness with the praises of God, it's also right that we do take time to lament. Uh, we can't avoid the fact that this past week we've passed a tragic milestone of uh, over 100,000 people who've lost their lives uh, to this virus. And we know the impact of that um, on people's families and friendship groups, such that no one in the nation is untouched by this terrible toll of loss. And uh, the Psalms give us words to express uh, that lament to God. And so I thought it would be good just to, before we come to our time of confession to read a few words from Psalm 13. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death and my enemy will say, I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. Well, as we cry out like that to our Lord, it's right too that we come before him to confess our own sins. But use this time as an opportunity to seek to be right with God. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. Let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Well, Psalm 13 uh, concludes, having lamented with these words. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. So let's sing the Lord's praise. All my days I will sing this song of gladness. Give my praise to the fountain of delights. Let's sing this together.
Well, in that place where the praise is never ending and we're joined together with countless worshippers sharing one song, we will be united with those um, both through history and from every corner of the world who share the Christian faith. And we now declare that together using the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we're going to um, pause for a moment and to focus on the work of our children. Uh, during these online services, um, I guess the work that's been going on amongst our children during the whole time of lockdown has been invisible to most of us, yet it's very much been going on. And so I want to have a chat with uh, Joe and Simon, who both have got uh, three young youngsters and also help with our children's work, um, to give us all an insight um, so that we can be prayerfully engaged with the work that is ongoing amongst our children at this moment. So let's now hear what they have to say. Well, welcome, Simon and Joe. Thanks very much for doing this and for all that you've been doing during the year. Can you just tell us what's been going on with the children's and youth work during these repeated lockdowns? Yeah, so um, a year ago, unfortunately now, we started by putting some um, Sunday school material on Facebook. Um, we just gave something for the children to do at home. Um, it wasn't especially interactive, but it was what we felt we could do at the time. Um, and as time went on, we realised that they would become disconnected and that we needed to um, kind of go live and interactive with them. So we have used Zoom every other week and um, we've had an, a story videoed every other week. So effectively, the groups that Liz, John, Margaret and I look after are scramblers and climbers. So they're three to about eight um, primary age children, really. And so every other week we have a lot of fun and games on Zoom, um, partly because of our technology ability and partly because they're really funny. They're really good company are our group. <laughs> and every other week, um, Matthew's been really helpful and has um, videoed Margaret reading a story to them. And um, if you've ever had Margaret read you a Bible story, you know how well she can bring it alive. And uh, the children really love that, really love it. So. So we've had lots of them on every week. They've been very involved and very engaged. It's been lovely, really lovely. But our main aim has been really to keep them connected to church, connected to each other, but most importantly, connected to Jesus. And Rashan and I have been running the uh, Explorers Group, which are the junior school aged children. And we uh, get together on Zoom every Sunday, uh, 9.30 and we our sessions are a mix of uh, bible studies um quizzes and uh, some games just to sort of keep it fun and interactive um, there's been great engagement and uh, a desire to learn from the kids about uh, you know god and and faith um and we even braved and asked the leader session uh, just before christmas which uh, which was great fun but a little bit nerve-wracking but but great fun and uh, Mark and uh, Susan run a grid, which is for secondary school aged children um, every Friday night. And again, they sort of follow similar themes to Explorers uh, with Bible study and, and more of an in-depth discussion. Um, and with some of their games, including the Wheel of Fortune, which some people may have remembered from the 80s. And, and what are your hopes and concerns for the work amongst the children? Um, I think our concern as a, as a group of leaders is um, for children's sort of mental health and, and well-being. Um, you know, we're really conscious that it's a difficult time for everybody, but especially the, the children. 
and you know they're missing out on so many of the interactions that they have with friends uh, with family and even at the minute with their teachers which uh, is perhaps a surprise to them uh, I think in terms of, of hope and, and praying is that um, you know the children will remain close to Jesus throughout this time um, learn to put their trust in him and grow in faith as he ultimately leads us through this difficult period. Now you, you talk about it as being a difficult period and you know we've heard lots about sort of families struggling at home with home learning and with uh, parents working at home and all of that. I mean how has your faith been tested during this past year? There's no doubt that it's been a difficult year and um, I suspect my patience has been tested a lot more than my faith. Um, <laughs> 17 years or so ago, Simon and I went through a very similar kind of lockdown experience. Our eldest child was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer and um, our lives shut down, locked down overnight. Um, and it was really isolating and it was really hard. And I'm conscious that there are some people who are really isolated by this experience. Um, but the thing that I think we learnt then that we've carried through this is that we can hope in God and we can trust Jesus and we can just keep going because he he has got us through and many other people through much more difficult times than we could imagine we could face and he will be with us and he will stay with us and he will be the light at the end of the tunnel whenever that light goes on we will see him and he will be there for us. Well, thank you for sharing that and uh, we very much look forward to that great day when we will see our Lord face to face. Now, now looking, looking ahead a bit, um, how, 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 how do you see God at work in the lives of the children and uh, what would you like us to be praying for? Uh, well, I, think, I think the great encouragement that I've got um, is, is seeing sort of whole families engaging in the sessions that, we, um, that we've run. Um, we've even recently been joined by um, some friends, children from other churches that um, are perhaps not as interactive with their children's ministry as, as we've been able to do. Um, but also the, you know, the total engagement in all the groups, um, you know, despite a lot of activity having to be on screens and on computers, you know, the level of engagement and, um, you know, what willing to learn. Um, has, has been great. Uh, I think in terms of prayer, um, I think, uh, you know, if we could ask for prayer for our children and families, but also the wider community of, of Rothley, um, that they could stay safe and be, prote be protected from, you know, the negative experiences that many have suffered from, from COVID. Um, a prayer also for the leaders, uh, for Joe, John, Liz, Margaret, Mark, Rashawn, Susan and myself, um, that we can keep the children really engaged with who Jesus is, um, to, you know, for them to know how much Jesus loves them, um, and for also energy and fresh ideas um, to sustain us through, you know, this long period of, of various lockdowns, um, to keep the sessions that we run, um, you know, novel and interesting. Great. Well, thanks very much for all you're doing. And I must say that uh, we really look forward to when we can all meet together in the building with the children. Um, we really miss that. And uh, I know I speak for the wider congregation too. So many thanks for all that you've done. Thank you. I hope you've been encouraged by that. And um, we'll, we'll take it uh, forwards to continue to pray for the work of our children, amongst our, our children, and to support uh, the leaders in what they're doing uh, week by week. I love that expression, to be connected to Jesus, connected to the Bible, and connected to the church. That's so important that they remain connected to each other uh, in that way. And now before David speaks to us, Liz is going to lead us in our prayers and then read our Bible passage. Father God, we acknowledge our dependence on you and ask you to supply all that we need, knowing that you will give most generously 
above all that we can imagine. Help us day by day to fix our eyes on Jesus and to walk with him. To rid ourselves of all that hinders and holds us back and to allow you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. May we grow in love for you and for our neighbours. Help us to read your word, to study it, to meditate upon it, to ponder it in our hearts. Teach us to pray and to listen to your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we think of our children and grandchildren and we pray for them, indeed for all children. We pray for their friendships and time to play. We pray for their education. We pray that they will come to know Jesus as Lord, Saviour and Friend. We pray for the ongoing work of Sunday schools, youth groups, the Oaks and all such ministries. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we think of all those affected by flooding, especially those in this country and those in Mozambique, Malawi and Zimbabwe affected by Cyclone Eloise. Keep them safe. Bring them relief. Give them hope. Help them to rebuild. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, our hearts go out to all who are lonely or feeling isolated. To all who are ill, physically or mentally. And we remember especially Judy Warrillow. To all who are struggling to make ends meet. To all who have lost loved ones and mourn. Especially the family and friends of Joe Regan. Thinking particularly of our husband Tom and their two children. May they know your compassion and care. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 9, verses 38 to 50. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop, 
because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. If anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung round their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. This is the word of the Lord. Hello, it's great to be here with you this morning. Let's begin with a prayer. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills that we may serve you today and always. Amen. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. We told him to stop because he was not one of us. Jesus is now move, moving south from Caesarea Philippi towards Jerusalem and he's passing through Galilee and it's here that today's passage is set. And in these verses from Mark chapter 9 verses 38 to 50, we've got yet another example of the disciples misunderstanding what Jesus's mission is all about. Perhaps they're anticipating that Jesus would rebuke the person driving out demons. But instead, he uses this occasion to teach them something of fundamental importance. And so, let's look at what Jesus had to say and see what that can teach us today as we try to follow Jesus day by day. In verse 38, we see that John wants to restrict working in Jesus' name to the inner circle, the so-called official group of disciples. But Jesus has no such qualms. Verses 39 and 40 read, Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me, for whoever is not against us is for us. The chances are that if someone is casting out demons by using Jesus' name, such a person is honouring Jesus, and hence it's, it's hardly likely to speak evil of Jesus. But John was edgy. John was edgy because this man was, quote, not one of us. John's attitude, which of course fits in with last week's passage in which the disciples were arguing about who would be greatest, John's attitude is a symptom of a disease that still, sadly, afflicts the church today. It's all too easy 
for those of us who are so-called insiders to assume that the church belongs to us. Likewise, it's easy for people who have worshipped and prayed in one particular style or tradition to believe that this and this alone is the proper way and that everything else is invalid. We need to be careful, very careful. These are mindsets we need to avoid. Why? Because out there in the world, there are many people whom Jesus may be referring to in verse 42 as little ones who believe. Perhaps with only a very sketchy understanding of the extent of Christ's love for them. And if the insiders do anything that discourages and excludes such people, they're in deep trouble. As verse 42 reminds us, let me read that. If anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung round their necks and they were thrown into the sea. This, I think, provides us with the right focus for the sayings about cutting off hands and feet and plucking out eyes in verses 43 to 47. Commentators are agreed that these are not to be taken literally, but rather referred to aspects of our humanness, which might, from time to time, cause us to stumble, and which could bring about our ruin as followers of Jesus. The immediate meaning in our passage seems to be that John and the others had better watch their step, in case their obsessional desire for honour when Jesus becomes king, prevents them in practice from being his disciples at all. What these verses are really saying is that anything that gets in the way must go. It's worth reflecting on this for a moment, in that what we are asked to give up is not something that is sinful in and of itself. What I think it is saying is that we should, on occasions, be prepared to reject something that is good and God-given, as hands and feet and eyes are, but which, at that particular moment, is leading us down the wrong path. We need, above all, to pray for discernment, so that we can avoid being drawn down blind alleys, which can stint our effectiveness as witnesses for Jesus. In these verses, Mark introduces us to the stern warning that those who drift down the wrong road are rejecting God's way with eternal consequences. Stern stuff, yes, but a reminder that as Christians we simply cannot drift along doing whatever we want, whenever we want. No, we have to listen to Jesus, to listen to him, as we were reminded three weeks ago. We have to root our eyes in his agenda, rather than our own agenda. And to do that, we need to let him speak to us through the scriptures and through prayer, through our times of prayer. Time and space are vital, and we need to prioritise these in what is not only a new year, but a new decade. As the Archbishop of Canterbury said in his New Year message, I quote, for this new year, and this new decade, I pray that we find the hope offered in Jesus Christ. My friends, whatever our circumstances, personally or societally, Jesus offers hope, not despair. Most of all, we have hope because God raised Jesus from the dead. This is the Christian hope that we will be celebrating at Easter, the fact that Jesus is alive. The end of this chapter today brings us back to the squabbling disciples. Salt preserves and it also purifies. As Jesus's people, the disciples are called to be the salt of the earth, as we read in Jesus's teaching in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. You, he says, are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot.
They must beware of losing their distinctive flavour, their cutting edge, and so must we. Likewise, they must learn to live at peace with each other. Chapter 10 of Mark's Gospel will show that they still have some way to go in learning this basic lesson. I wonder if you and I have learnt that lesson, a lesson which is part of the cost of following Jesus. Are we taking appropriate action to ensure that our salt, so to speak, hasn't lost its savour and that our commitment to Jesus remains strong and sure and that we keep our eyes firmly fixed on him rather than what our self-centred celebrity culture has to offer? Verse 50 exalts, exalts us, and I quote, Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. My friends, let these words ring in our ears as we leave this passage. But one last thought from the great 19th century English bishop J.C. Ryle. He said this, Above all, let us live in peace with one another not seeking great things or striving for preeminence, but clothed with humility and loving all who, know, who love Christ in sincerity. He says, these are simple things, but in attending to them is great reward. Wise words for each one of us both to ponder and to act upon in the particularly challenging times in which we are currently living. Amen. Our final hymn is a reminder of God's grace. Um, it celebrates having known God's grace uh, in the past and being confident of the grace that our Lord will show to us in the future. Through every danger, trial and snare, I have already come. His grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Let's sing this hymn together.
I'm so glad you've been able to join us for this time of worship together. And I do want to emphasise that if um, something's been said in today's service or you've had some question about Jesus and what it means to follow him, uh, do please be in touch. You can get in touch with, um, with us through our, through our website and through our Facebook page or even just to phone or email me directly and be very happy to chat about what it means to be following Jesus Christ, even through these difficult times that we're living in at the moment. A closing prayer. Go before us, Lord, in all we do with your most gracious favour, and guide us with your continual help, that in all we do, begun, completed and ended in you, we may glorify your name, and finally, by your mercy, receive everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and those whom you love, now and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.